Hello, and welcome to our interview series, We Choose to Thrive, brought to you by Becky Norwood of The Woman I Love. We bring you stories of survivors who have chosen to heal, to thrive. If you are an abuse survivor and are starting or continuing your healing journey, these stories will provide hope, inspiration, and a knowingness that you are not alone. Join us in today's interview. So introduce yourself to us. This is Brenda Hammond. She resides in Canada, and I don't remember the name. <laughs> <laughs> I am in Alberta Beach, Alberta. Oh. <laughs> Very good. Brenda, give us a brief story story of your background, what brought you to where you are today, um, but the starting of what happened to you, and we'll go from there. I grew up in rural Alberta. My parents moved there in the late 50s, so it was basically homesteading, that sort of stuff. We didn't have family around, you know, so it was just my family that was there, and my abuse started at the age of five by a farmhand that my dad had hired. And he was actually the son of a family friend that they had helped out move up there also. And that continued, you know, for the summer of my fifth year. And then it ended up at the end being a family member and the farmhand that raped me. And the farmhand was bad enough. You know, I, it, I was shattered and, and that sort of stuff. And I was terrified and afraid and he had threatened to kill the family. But when, my family member also became involved. Then that um, that was, was crushing. Yeah, that was, that crushing. was crushing. Because now I couldn't trust anybody. Like before, I could at least trust something, but but when that happened, I lost all trust. I couldn't trust the family, so I literally started to run, and I mean, literally ran. I ran away from home every day. I I went out into the bush. You know, nobody knew where I was. And I looked at my five-year-old granddaughter. Mm. And, and I looked at her and I went, oh, my God. I was that old when I had a baby. To, to survive on my own. You were still a baby. You know, I was still a baby, yeah. And, you know, I was a tough kid. I had to be. But I lived inside the family, but I lived on the outside. Mm. I was always looking through the screen at everybody else and you know yeah they fed me and they clothed me but that was the large extent of it my survival became my norm and yeah I didn't trust it affected relationships it affected relationships with friends because trust became such a huge huge determining factor for me you know if, if I couldn't trust you then I didn't need you in my life or anywhere near me. So it, it became almost like 100% over here and zero over here for anything else. Like it, it, was, it was crazy. And relationships and that sort of stuff suffered. My first marriage was a disaster because, you know, I thought that he was going to protect me. And he turned out to be a sex addict, which I thought to myself, oh, my God, oh, my Like, what's the matter with me? Like, well, that goes back to my heart. When we've had those kind of things, we seem to, we don't. We haven't tasted a whole lot differently, and we attract that which we know. We attract. That's exactly it. We attract. And you don't know that, because I always said, like, you know, am I putting out vibes? Do I have abuse me? Put on my <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it took me a long time to actually stand up and say, no, I have to make a change in my life. And it was over 40 years mm -hmm. that I ran. And boy, I'm telling you, I, I could run really well. I and was a runner myself. Yeah, you do. You, you have no choice. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's ingrained in you. And the words that your abusers have said to you about your your value in life stick to you like mud, mm -hmm. you know, and it's hard to scrape that off after it's been dried on there and caked on for so long. So, so scraping off the mud from the abusers and learning how to live past that was definitely a challenge. 
Mm, I must say, get that. It's a challenge. Where are you now in your healing path? My healing, I am actually really good. I've done my journey, and, and, and my journey's far from over because I used to think, oh, I've done my therapy, I'm good. No, no, no. It comes back and it bites you in the butt. So I know that I have what I call med. And somebody said to me, what is med? And I said, I have a mental and emotional disability. You can't see it. It's not PTSD, but it's met, and it's from my abusers. And it comes up and it rears its little ugly head every once in a while where I, something will go wrong and I'll go, <gasps> you know, so, and I know I have to live with that. It, there's triggers. There are triggers. And my biggest trigger for me is somebody says, you don't look after your horse properly or attacks me in that aspect then, or you're not looking after this right. Then I get really defensive and and then I think okay this isn't about me it's about them you know because I if I could put shoes on my horses and fur coats and whatnot, I would there are triggers and it's about trust trust is a huge trigger for me if I can't trust you and you just have to do one little thing and it's poof it's done like it takes a long time to gain trust back for me so I get yeah, that. There are, yeah, there are triggers, and those will always be there, and I just have to recognize those. But other than that, you know, I've done the therapy, I've done cellular release, I've done all of that sort of stuff to try to, it's out of my brain and it's out of my heart, you know, it's always going to be a memory, but now I had to work to get it out of my body. Right. And that was another journey that I didn't know that I had to do, and <laughs> I'm glad that I did it. You know, and if there's anything else that rears its ugly little head, then I'll deal with it again. And deal with it, right. Yeah, and deal with it because it's always going to be there. It's a part of who I am. So out of all of the positive things you've done, you've done a lot of them to overcome the trauma of the past. Which was the one that made the most impact? Seeking help for the first time and actually having somebody say, oh, my God. There's something else going on with this woman. Now, what is it? And when I went, it was because my ex-husband had died and I was blamed for his death. All of the fallout of that. And I went to my doctor and I said, you know, I, I think I'm going crazy. So I told her what was going on. And she says, okay, you need to see this lady. And she sent me to Lorraine. And she was a grief counselor, and it didn't take her long to figure out that there was more going on besides <laughs> just There's that. There's more to this. And she slowly cracked open. Yeah, and she did. She cracked open my Pandora's box, and I was not willing. Really, I wasn't willing to look at it. I thought, I knew about the abuse. It's in the past. Let's move forward. And I had a rude awakening because it may be in the past, but unless you deal with it, you do not move forward. No, that's right. So for those that are just starting out on their healing journey, what words of advice would you give? Don't be afraid. It's going to get tough. And if you need to take a break, take a break. It's okay. But don't be afraid because what's at the end of the tunnel is something that you have never, ever imagined in your whole life that your life could be that way. It is powerful and inspiring but you have to walk through hell to get there. Mm -hmm. And frankly, you've already been through hell. Now you're just going back to the gates and leaving the hell. And the fear of what they go through in that process is nowhere near as bad as what they've already been through. Nope. And nowhere near as bad. Yeah. You know, and like I say, for me, I had been in hell for such a long time. And when I had to walk out of it, it was like walking that gauntlet. But boy, I could see those gates. And I was determined that I was going to head through those gates and leave this part of what happened to me in the past where it belonged instead of hanging on to me like Klingons, <laughs> you know, dragging me down wherever I went. <laughs> so Brenda, I read your first, first book uh -huh. and then I've been working with you on your second book. Yes. There's a big contrast between the two books. There certainly lots, is. lots of healing. And tell us a little bit about your process and what writing your books have done for you. When I wrote the first book, it was written from the five-year-old's point of view, how she felt. And what was the title of that book? I can't hear the birds anymore. And because it was from the child's point of view, it's a tougher read, that's for sure. But it's a real read. 
and the decisions and everything else that that child made from five-year-old to a 10-year-old to a 15-year-old to a to a 25 year old were all affected by what happened to her and not de dealing with it. And near the end of the book, it talks about the healing and, and dealing with that sort of stuff. But it, it's it, pretty raw. It's a pretty strong book. Yeah. And it's a very necessary book. It is. I think sometimes things get sugar coated a little bit and it's raw and it's vulnerable, but it's real. Mm -hmm. And the second book I am, is more written from my perspective as a woman, my journey. It started off not going through the healing yet and dealing with things and realizing that my life has to be better than this. I have to be more than a pinata for abusers. There has to be something else in my life. It's a way different journey as a woman than it was as a child. Mm -hmm. And I think it is a very strong and powerful book in giving the message that if I can go through it and if I can survive it, then anybody can survive it. Yes. Yeah. So do you feel that there was a lot of healing just from the writing itself? Oh, yes. You have to get out of your brain and out of your heart and you have to put it on paper. Otherwise, it just rolls around in there and keeps on causing all kinds of damage. And the minute you start writing it down, even if you don't share it, and that's what I've always said to people, you know, you don't have to stand up on the rooftops and shout that you've been, you know, involved in incest and sexually abused or raped. But you just have to start writing it down and getting it out of your body. And if you do share it with your family, that's great. But be prepared for the fallout of that because when it becomes a family member, it becomes very personal inside the family. If it's a stranger outside the family or, and it's never really a stranger, it's always somebody that you know. You know, I've learned that one. It's different. They can be mad at that person and there's no conflict. But when it's inside your family, that's a whole different ball of wax. And a family has a hard time dealing with that. It does, yeah. Who did they yeah. choose? Did they choose the victim or did they choose the abuser? But they choose the abuser because the victim has spoke out. And instead of rallying behind the victim and saying, we're here for you. And some families do do that. And I had a brother and a sister-in-law that definitely did that for me. But the rest of my family, no way. Yeah. I know the, the pathway. I'm, I'm just getting ready to publish my own book. And, and, you know, the healing that's happened for me just from the writing of the book has been phenomenal. It seems that as you write the story, you actually write yourself a new story. Yes, you do. You know, and it's a, it's a fresh story. It's a story for now. Yeah. Not that thing that just weighs you down so heavily for all those years, but for, there's some kind of magic that comes from writing. Yeah, there certainly is. When I wrote the first book, even though the charges were off and I could write, write the story and I could not have any emotional charge from it anymore, my body still did. And it reacted like I was still in that trauma. And that's when I realized that I needed to have cellular release done. Because when I finished writing that first book, it was like, oh my goodness sakes. Like, you know, I was getting sick and I had infections and I had all kinds of weird things that should, I should never have had. And when I wrote the second book, I didn't have that problem because I had already started the cellular release. I was already ready releasing the trauma from the cells, from my, you know, root chakra, that sort of stuff. It was all being released. And that in itself was liberating, I must say. So do you believe that in the healing process, or for those that are thinking about starting on this, what do you think is one of the key factors that keeps us from sharing our story from doing this, taking the necessary steps to begin that healing process. Fear and the shame. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Those are the two biggest things you have uh, been told not to tell. You're terrified to tell the fear of telling and what people will think of you. And then the, the a shame, the shame, because we always tend to think it's our fault. We always tend to think it's our fault. And then the families, your families turn to you and they turn against you. And then there's shame even more because now you've, you've talked about it. You've brought it out in the open and how dare you. Sadly to say, you're abused in a whole different way. 
you know, because they attack you. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, you know, you're a liar or you're this or you're that or you're doing this for this or you're doing this for that. Instead of standing up and standing behind you, they have old prejudice. They see you in the old eyes of how you looked before the abuse or after the abuse, I should say. I, so they see you and they've seen you throughout your life. And they have those eyes that are looking at you with those same prejudice. And until you change yourself. They're still going to look at you with those same eyes and they have to stop and they have to look at you with clear eyes. Some family members don't want to do that. But the other side of the coin is those family members don't want to face the responsibility that they held for not taking care of nope. they for not protecting. That's right. So, yeah. It's easier to put shame on the victim than to put shame on themselves. Right. Yeah. It's so, easy to look in the mirror and say, oh, it's not me, but it's that person's fault. Yeah. So you have an amazing, beautiful story, and you, you have every reason to be proud of yourself. And I so appreciate that you took the time, the heart, the willingness, and you're doing so much on your own. You have um, your book, your second book's coming out, and that's I Am. And then you, you also mentioned you have a workbook. Tell, tell us about the workbook. The workbook is an interactive, it's called I Am Your Journey of Self-Discovery. It starts off as talking about making changes in your life, that if you feel like you are in a washing machine and the load's unbalanced, you know, and you feel like that's your life, then you need to start finding out why. And there's exercises in there to help you clear your mind and to just relax and start to think about who you inside truly are. And, you know, you can write down messages and you can write down stuff that's coming to you. But the biggest thing, it's, it's going to help open up your memories. And if there's something in there that needs to be dealt with, whether it's your, your patterns of your life, whether it's been abused or something else, each section of the book has a different uh, segment that you get to color. And the first one starts off with, with your soul. And then it goes into cocoons and, and butterflies and things like that. Each one is about courage, determination compassion and it's all about for you not anybody else compassion for yourself courage for yourself accepting Loving yourself forgiving yourself that's right and it's all about your own journey of seeing you through new eyes instead of old very eyes good. very proud of you who you are and what you're doing and oh, thank you i'm thanking you for being a thriver <laughs> <laughs> It is a choice. It is a choice to choose yes. that we have. To, we it is a choice. We choose yeah. to thrive. Yeah. You have to have happiness after abuse. Mm -hmm. And that is a big thing because lots of people don't. No. It's massive. And the, the side effects. And we know that our tendencies as abuse survivors are very often self-destructive. Mm -hmm. Because because of the low self-esteem, because of the hurt in the heart, the brokenness, but we don't have to stay there. You know? No, we don't. And we, and we have that choice. And I always say to everybody, you know, my story is no different than anybody else's story. It's no less tragic and it's no more tragic than anybody else's. That's what I say. I don't hold a corner on the market. No, I certainly don't. And there's people that have been abused way worse than I have been. And you know, you can take back your life. You can take control. You can take it back from the abusers and you can say, no, thank you very much. I think that I need to move forward from this and I need to live the life that I was meant to live when I came into this world because this, this wasn't it. And I think that was my de uh, deciding factor because somebody said to me, you chart your own journey before you come into this world. And I thought, like, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I do. what on earth did I, I do that? I charted all of this crap. Like, oh, really? And I thought, okay, well, if that's the case, then what was I supposed to learn? And what was I supposed to do with all of this? How can I turn this into a positive? All of this negative into a positive. And that's what I decided. You know what, girl? You need to stand up and you need to scream from the rooftops that this has happened and you need to bring awareness and you need to help other women like yourself and you're doing a fantastic job with that of getting their story up because not everybody wants to write a book and not everybody wants that to happen what's powerful is if you write it down mm -hmm. and if you send it and you do something anonymously at least you're getting it out 
And that is, that is the important thing, is well, get the, it out of your body. The whole purpose behind this Should We Choose to Thrive series is to show others that are going through it that, you know, we, by our collective voices rising together, we can show that there is a healing path. There is a way out of this. Sometimes when you're in it, you have you can't see the forest for the trees and you cannot tell another way is out there for it. And it's just when those little things in that heart of yours that start keep saying, there's got to be something better, there's got to be something better. That's when this little trickle effect will, will become open into their hearts. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's like warriors going to war. You know, if one guy is walking, it's a, it's a lonely path. But if you have more people joining you, then the path gets wider and wider and wider. And then it becomes not just this muddy bog that you're walking through. It becomes harder. And then the people that follow behind you are able to walk a little bit easier because the path has already been made for them. Very beautiful. You are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for taking the time for this interview. <laughs> well, thank you for asking me. I am truly blessed and I am honored to know you. Thank you. Same here. This story was brought to you by The Woman I Love at www.thewomanilove.com. If you are starting down the path to healing, no matter what stage, our united message is that you are not alone. We do not want to live with a victim mentality. We choose to thrive, and as such, we are joining hands to spread the message that you too can heal and thrive. Will you join us as a force of change we need in our world? Only by healing, growing strong and uniting, can we create the awareness of this terrible epidemic that is plaguing our world. We heal in many different ways. There is no one right way to heal, but the right thing to do is to heal. Heal for yourself for your families, and for our world. Will you join us in this We Choose to Thrive revolution? Reach out to us at www.thewomanilove.com. Also check out the incredible resources at www.rainn.org. And if you are actively facing abuse in this moment, do not delay. Seek out help in your local community immediately. Here is to your wellness, healing, and thriving.